to have um, three of our um, initial staff members here today. And uh, this is Richard Ngoma, who I've known for eight years, um, nine years, when he was serving a um, sentence for murder in Johannesburg Juvenile Prison. He's now a community coordinator running a very large youth group in Mpumalanga, and he's going great places in our company. Um, that's Lusejo Chabalala, who has been with Kalisa for six years. He was sentenced um, for rape at the age of 14, and he was subsequently acquitted. And he's been working for us for five years, and he's a master trainer in puppeteering, um, and many community projects, um, and he's won many different awards for the work that he's done. Um, Bridget, I met in Johannesburg Female Prison seven years ago when she was also serving um, a sentence for an aggressive crime. Bridget was also acquitted, and since the day she um, was released from prison, she's been working with us, and she's doing so well. She's a team leader. So these are just three of our team members. We employ many ex offenders around the country, and we're really, really pleased that um, to be able to prove irrefutably and scientifically that with the right support and um, continuum of services, we can really deal with the crime in this country. So this is a chapter in the book, uh, the kind of prison interviews with prisoners, fictional prisoners in the book, who are animals. They have, um, they, they are accompanied by spirit critters, um, magical animals. Every criminal gets burdened with one in the world that I've imagined. Um, so it's really great to have people who have actually experienced prison to be reading these, these chapters. Caleb Carter, H.M. Bowen Prison, Australia. I didn't have the tapir when I got here. She came on the second night after I was jumped by a couple of the 4161s from Melbourne. Lucky, my mate, Len, already was inside and they, he knew their game. He gave me a shank as I arrived and it ended up in the neck of one guy, a tattooed motherfucker called Dick. That night, at about the same time, Dick was dying in a hospital in Gilo. The tapir appeared outside my cell. I heard a screeching, scratching at the door of solitary confinement. Scared the hell out of me. The guards said she was still covered in jungle mud when they found her. I mean, there's cameras and these things from a different continent. How come no one saw her arrive? How did she get here? If she can walk through walls or fly or something, why can't she carry me out of here? Anyway, I love her. They let me look after her good, take her on walks around the yard. She's a stupid looking creature and she's dopey as shit. But when the guys see her with, at my side, they remember what happened to Dick. They remember not to fuck with Carter. Thank you. Zahia Kadim, Karachi Central Chain, Pakistan. They keep our animals in cages in another part of the prison. We don't see them. When they want to torture us, they put them in the back of a car and drive away to Kentiba. The pain is unbearable. You scream, you vomit, you say anything. My corporal was with me when I was arrested. I was nine. The police saw me walking on the street with my cobra around my neck. They grabbed me. They said I robbed the house. I didn't do it. But they beat me until I said I did. When they brought me here, they threw my, they threw my cobra into one room with all the other animals. The animals would bite each other and get infected and die. The undertow would come every night for every prisoners. Too many people died. Now, they keep the animals in cages, but they still don't let us see them. Not unless we give a bribe, a man's salary, for a guard. I don't have that money. I haven't seen my cobra since I was arrested. I'm now 14 years old. Thank you.
Tyra Jones, Cochran, USA. It's crazy in here. I know you can't tear a man from his animal. Ain't right. But some of these niggas got real wild animals, man. One guy's got a cougar. You can't tell me that's right. Letting a prisoner walk around with a cougar. There's an order to things too. Don't matter what you did. You got a bad ass animal in here. They're a bad ass too. And it don't matter how many people you killed. You got a chipmunk or a squirrel, you're gonna be a bitch where it is. Then there's me. I got a butterfly. Keep it in a matchbox. I ought to be pissed off, man. <laughs> you can guess what it's like to be here with a butterfly. <laughs> Except for the stuff it led me to do. See, when I go to sleep every night, I wake up as someone else. For the time I'm asleep, I live the day of someone else on the other side of the world. Man, I've been kids in Africa and India. I was once this old Chinese woman. Mostly I'm poor, but sometimes I get lucky and I'm rich. What I'm saying is, I can't hate the butterfly. Butterfly breaks me out of here every night. Thank you. <laughs>